right. Sorry? Just reporting. Cool. Okay. Uh, so this is our rehearsal presentation for English 1102 and to Dr. Crowler. Uh, it's about our mapping project. We picked Oliver Twist, and the group is composed of uh, Chris, Nick, Matthew, and Stephen, and me, Abby. So we're, with this presentation, we're going to start off with the purpose and the idea of the project, and we'll bring Chris. Okay, so uh, the reason that we chose the characters in Oliver Twist is because uh, simply from reading the novel uh, Oliver Twist, you don't get all of the uh, facts about London that you need to understand what Dickens is really trying to say. Uh, because, like, any resident of London would know, like, which uh, areas of London what he's talking about, like, for, uh, for instance, Saffron Hill, they they would know that, uh, from Dickens' time, they would know that that was, a, like, a poor area of London, and one, like, let, uh, I guess, not so well off as opposed to other d areas of London, but then you would get into, like, uh, areas like Clerkenwell, and then you know that those are, like, more upper class. And so by mapping, oh, uh, like, the different locations from the novel and the paths that uh, the different characters took, we can show how Dickens is arguing that uh, uh, people shouldn't see themselves as fixed in their, like, social class and that, uh, that they have an actual ability to move up the social ladder. And he's also arguing by, like, different characters such as Mr. Brownlow that, that you should be willing to reach out to lower or class uh, people and to help them move up the social ladder. So, I guess that brings us to Nick, who will be explaining the map that he created for our presentation. It's right there. Thank you. Okay, well, I created a map in Google Earth, and uh, I found online several templates of, like, maps from the 18th and 19th century. This one's from the 18th. And um, it has most of the locations on the map already. I like, highlighted them so that they could be seen. And um, <coughs> I started tracing the path that the book describes for different characters. Like when Oliver and company go to um, steal from the Maley's house, they take this path through these areas down to here. When uh, Sykes is fleeing after he killed Nancy, he travels this path roughly up here. And then when Nancy goes to meet Rose later on, she takes this path. Next right here. And uh, <clears throat> I'm also going to add, like, when you click on any of these things, it'll give a little bit description about the place. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to probably take a poverty map that we found and place that on top of this to see where the lower class areas are and see if there are, if there are any correlations to our topic. And on that note, Stephen will explain that. Could you go back to the uh, last one? Okay. Well, uh, in order to try to show our point of how um, this will correlate to the flight of the poor and how this uh, Dickens' whole idea is for the poor to uh, step outside of their uh, economic ladder, uh, we try to look at the locations and how uh, how people or how people in the novel move. Right? Obviously, most of the uh, activities happen in this kind of this area, and we want to know why people are trying to branch out. Right? Um, a thesis that we have, or a hypothesis that we have, is that uh, the reason why people are branching out is because they're trying to escape this poor condition, and we we are uh, predicting that this is a poor area of London, or at least a not desirable area of London. Uh, based upon that, we might alter a little bit about, um, you know, alter our main idea a little bit, but or in our argument a little bit. But uh, for right now, we think that the reason why uh, Sykes. Um, escapes through this path and the reason why uh, people are going up all the way over here to steal stuff is that uh, they're, they're trying to get out of their um, uh, situation, uh, in this case their location, and that's what we're trying to map out. Next. 
And now Matthew's going to come and talk about external resources. All right, so we used a couple of external resources. We had a few books that we went through to find important information that related to the social structure of uh, London and figure out how that would correlate to um, events that happened in the book. And we also used web resources to find how um, uh, different maps in London would, um, we, we looked at different maps and extrapolated data from that and made connections to the novel. Okay, so um, today in class we kind of conducted quite a, like a peer review session and we got some comments on our project so far. A lot of them were pretty positive. We got two thumbs up from a couple of groups there and um, they mainly the more detail needed to be added. A lot of them said that um, we could label the map and say that it's clearly London. Um, it's Oliver Twist. It should be London, so that could be implemented. Um, we're going to be adding pictures to each location, and in addition to that, uh, descriptions of each location. And um, they suggested, you know, kind of create a, a key and make colors uh, to represent each character, make it more clear. And uh, that'll all be happening in the future once our project gets finalized. And uh, to conclude this presentation, uh, our project will be having some future implementations on like labeling and adding details and further establishing the tracks of the characters and making it much more clear and user friendly. We'll be uploading our mapping project onto a Weebly and creating uh, a website where we're going to clearly uh, state our purpose and our main points. So that concludes the presentation. Uploading. Let's press stop.